So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography PX. In today's video, we will review the Tamron 35mm f1.4 DI USD lens. Do know that this video will be broken down into sections. You can find the timestamps for this video in the description box below. In a market packed with already excellent first party offerings, Tamron accepts the challenge to produce a lens that rivals the first party competition. And not only that, they've declared the ambitious goal to create their greatest lens ever and the pinnacle of their lens performance. And thus borns the Tamron SP 35 millimeter DI F1.4 USD lens, codename F045. This lens is the culmination of that concept and their obsession for exceptional image quality combined with their technical competence to create what they claim as their finest lens ever manufactured and their pride and joy. And not only that, its legendary performance has made it worthy of being the lens that marks their milestone 40th anniversary of the SB series and 40 years of celebrating outstanding optical quality. We were able to get our hands on this unique lens for review. Thank you, Tamron USA, for sending us this lens for review today. Tamron aims this lens as a competitor against some rather fierce first-party competition, most notably Canon's 35 f1.2L Mark II lens, Sigma's 35mm f1.4 Art, and Nikon's 35 f1.4G lens. In today's video, we assess its strengths, its weaknesses, and answer whether or not this lens lives up to Tamron's bold claims. So then, what are the designations that Tamron uses? What is SP? What is DI? And also, what is USD? So for this lens in particular, it belongs to Tamron's SP Super Performance Series. This designation applies to their premium lineup of lenses, including G2 zooms and their more recent SP primes. Currently, Tamron holds 17 total SP lenses for DSLR cameras. The next designation is DI, which basically stands for Digitally Integrated Design. DI lenses represent a generation of lenses designed for use and are optimized for DSLR cameras, be they full frame or APS-C formats. These lenses also hold superior design and feature multi-coding techniques. And the standard DI series marks full frame SLRs while DI2 marks APS-C SLRs. The last designation that we must cover is USD, which designates Tamron's proprietary ultrasonic silent drive motor technology. This basically uses high frequency vibrations for fast and smooth autofocus driving. Next, what mount does this lens support? This lens is compatible with full frame Canon EF and Nikon F mount DSLR cameras. It's also compatible with their mirrorless systems as well, using their respective adapters. For Canon, that would be the RF to EF adapter and Nikon, the F to Z adapter. Do know that when using this lens on non-SLR bodies, for example, the Sony A7 via the MC11 adapter made by Sigma, this lens doesn't perform very well. The main reason is that the MC11 specifically is designed for use with Sigma lenses and autofocusing does not work when mounted with that specific adapter. This is the case for not only this lens, but all Tamron lenses. But let's talk about build quality, construction, and design. Here are some general specifications. So the lens opens to a maximum of f1.4 and closes to f16, a respectable range. And for filters, it uses the 72 millimeter filter thread. And the close focusing distance of this lens is 0.3 meters, or 11.8 inches, which means the lens can work as a semi-macro lens if need be. Internally, the optics used here are dense for fast fixed focal length. It features a total of 14 elements in 10 groups, four of which are low dispersion elements used to combat chromatic aberration, which essentially is a reduction of sharpness that occurs and color fringing. And it also features three aspherical elements to minimize distortion as well. This combination virtually eliminates chromatic aberrations and flares that otherwise would 
plague fast aperture lenses. It also provides a robust metal alloy build and leak resistant seals throughout the lens barrel for weather sealing. Tamron has also installed a nine blade diaphragm to retain smooth circular shaped out of focus defocusing rendering. This creates a bokeh that is visually appealing and provides an artistic feel. And lastly, it features an electromagnetic diaphragm system for Nikon mount lenses, which basically creates more precise aperture control. For autofocus, it provides a system that is specific to this lens and brand new for Tamron. It combines Tamron's ultrasonic silent drive along with the new dynamic rolling cam mechanism. These combine to basically reduce load and increase speed and accuracy. The USD motor also delivers quiet autofocusing, though not entirely silent. Externally, the lens consists of a single manual focus switch, which switches between manual and autofocus. It also provides a large manual focus collar ring, which offers good resistance and a firm feel during use. The focusing collar also provides a full-time manual focus override for instantaneous changes and instantaneous adjustments to focus. The lens also features a new revamped B-Bar G2 coating, which reduces ghosting and flares when shooting in backlit conditions. On top of that, Tamron has also installed a fluorine coating on the front element, making the surface more resistant to damages and easier to clean. The only real drawback here is its rather hefty size. For the Canon variant, the lens alone weighs 805 grams or 28 ounces, making it the heaviest of the lenses in its competing class. The reality is that this lens alone weighs significantly more than most compact mirrorless cameras, and it's quite heavy. However, how is the image quality? Image quality is an area this lens absolutely shines in both rendering and sharpness. Even wide open at f1.4, the lens remains sharp and details are punchy. The only minor drawback is that there is a slight vignette at f1.4 and f2.0. However, by f2.8, this vignette cleans up and the lens performs quite well throughout the remainder of the range. When shooting in backlit conditions, you'd expect to see minor chromatic aberrations and ghosting in areas of contrast in the background. However, the internal elements have virtually eliminated any presence of artifacts, ghosting, and chromatic aberrations, and contrast remains excellent. How about the focusing performance? Autofocusing performance is excellent and remarkably fast. We tested this lens in combination with the Canon 5D Mark III, and the combination delivered resounding speed and accuracy during our testing. The USD motor coupled with the newly redesigned dynamic rolling cam mechanism provided constant focusing speed across all shooting situations that we tested. Single shot and point to point focusing were both brilliant and the full time manual focus override system was quite helpful during video recording as well. Overall, we're impressed by both the performance and the functionality of this lens. And in autofocus, this lens easily rivals the first party competition, hands down, no questions about that. The bokeh is also excellent. The blur gently blends away from the ultra sharp in focus areas and delivers that signature velvety Tamron appeal. And lastly, let's talk about the value of this lens compared to the competition. What ultimately sets this lens apart from the competition is its performance, which easily is on par, if not better than the first party alternatives. What's left is a lens that rivals the first party competition in both build quality and performance. And to kick it off, it's relatively cheap and a bargain consider what's offered here. Overall, the price to performance ratio makes it an excellent, compelling option for those shopping for this focal length for a DSLR camera. And it's also an attractive prime lens for those looking for added versatility in low light shooting, or you're looking for added depth of field, but are on a budget. The only real drawback with this lens is its heftier size. Bar none, it is the largest lens of its competing class. So if you're looking for a lighter offering, this may not be the lens for you. Otherwise, it has virtually no compromises or drawbacks. 
And in many ways, this particular lens represents Tamron's culminated effort over the last decade in moving from a more consumer-based budget alternative and third-party manufacturer instead to focusing on rivaling the first-party com competition and now becoming a premium alternative, much like what Sigma has done with their recent art series and their art lineup. This lens offers a build quality and performance that easily rivals the first party competition while simultaneously undercutting both first party manufacturers in price by nearly 50%. And not only that, it also offers far better value than the Sigma. And in the end, the Tamron 35 f1.4 truly represents what Tamron has claimed. And yes, the rumors are true. This is easily their top lens and one that provides enormous value for money. This is what happens with decades of refinement are poured into a single product. And that product is now taking the reign as the best 35 millimeter released to date. So there you have it, my friends. There is our review of Tamron's 35 millimeter F1.4 lens. For more information on this lens, check out our full review at photographypx.com. There you can find a gallery with a larger set of images than what we showed in this video and also downloadable raw files for your editing pleasure. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the contents of today's video insightful and it added value to you. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also, leave us a like and a comment in the description down below. Let us know if we overlook something or we miss something that we covered in today's video. I've been your host, Devon Lennox, Photography. <laughs>